Hi everyone, Salam Alaikum. Yes. Okay. I'm inviting our guests. Can you guys hear me? And can you guys hear, see me clearly? Hi, Atira. All right, hold on. Hi, Kai. Okay. Yasmin, I have already sent you the request. Okay. Can I go? <laughs> <Hello. laughs> Hi, Yasmin. Hi. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't be. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, I can hear you clearly and I can see you clearly. Alhamdulillah. Uh, what about our audience? Can you guys hear me clearly? And Yasmin, can you guys see us? Okay, I guess. Okay, it's eight fifteen now. Inshallah, we can officially start. Okay, Yasmin? Okay, sure. All right. Oh my God, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. And a very good evening to all of you. Thank you so much for sparing your time with us tonight. Tonight, in episode 17, Read With 30, I have Sister Yasmin with us. She will be sharing uh, a book by Usaza Yasmin Majahid. I lost my way, finding this. Finding happiness after despair. How are you, Yasmin? Yeah, I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, okay, before we officially start, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so I'm Yasmin. I'm studying at University of Malaya. I'm doing degree in economic. Uh, wow. I'm in my second year now. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay, so today, Sister Yasmin will be sharing with us. I lost my way from Sister Yasmin Majahid. Inshallah, she will be sharing with us the take-home messages, all the the benefits, all what what she likes about the book. She will share with us, Inshallah. Okay, uh, but before that, <laughs> let's break the ice, Miss. This is the first time uh, we met, actually. So, okay. before we officially start, let's do uh, a nice breaking, inshallah. So, okay, I, have sure. a few, I have a few questions to ask uh, Yasmin. And it's, it's an easy question. I bet she can answer it spontaneously. Okay, ready? <laughs> Yasmin? <laughs> okay, ready? All right. Question number one. Um, okay, so the question is related to books. And reading. So question number one is fiction or non-fiction? Non-fiction. I always go okay. to non-fiction. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Ebook or paperback? Paperback. I okay. but I do read I do use ebook when there's mm? no choice. Yeah. Mm, I see. Last question. What reading is to you? Okay. For me, I think reading is something that we need. It's not, it's, it's no longer hobby though. It's something that you really need in your daily life. Like, oh. I, I'm not judging people who don't read, but I do think like, what are you guys doing without reading in your life? <laughs> like, you, do, you do need a lot of reading. Like, you need to keep your brain, you know, growing. Yeah. Yes. That you can tell she's reading. an avid reader by the definition of reading she gave us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still learning. 
<laughs> okay, so that's what Yasmin think about reading. So yeah. what do you guys think about reading? So I would like to know, maybe Yasmin also would like to know, what do you guys think about reading? You can drop your your answer on the comment section below and inshallah towards the end of the session, I will read it. So we will be inspired and encouraged to read more inshallah. Yeah. Okay. So Yasmin, are you ready? Oh, uh, sure. Okay, I'm ready inshallah. <laughs> okay. okay. The I'm floor ready. is yours. Take it on. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> so today I will be reviewing this book. It's from Yasmin Mojahid. Did I pronounce it correctly? Mojahid. Yes. Mojahid. Yes. Okay, Yasmin Mojahid. Okay. So basically, Ustazah Mojahid is a Muslim scholar based in United States of America. She is, she is a specialist in psychology and spiritually and per- personal development. And if I'm not mistaken, she, grad- she had a degree in psychology and then attained her master in journalism and mass communication in one of the universities in the United States. And then she is also the first Muslim woman to become an instructor at Al Maghrib Institute. So I guess if you guys want to find out more about Al Maghrib Institute, you guys can Google it up. And then, okay, so one of the best thing about Yas- Yasmin Mojahid is <laughs> Yasmin Mojahid has an ability to relate all the interval of life to one's relation with the creator. So a lot of people think it's a remedy for those seeking for comfort and solace in, the, in this dunya. Yeah. Okay, so if if you want me to summarize the book like in a very short way, I can say like in this book, we get to know that happiness is not impossible uh, no matter how much you, you go, you've been through in your life regardless of how far you have gotten far from the cruelest part. So read this book and find your way back to the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I can see many I, sticky notes there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I do put like I do put a sticky note on those Where that I I, I like the most. Okay, I think I will first start with the. Okay, oh sorry, before that, there is uh for your information, there's twelve chapter in this book with only eighty eight pages, including the Q and A and the glossary. So you guys, I think you guys can actually fin if you guys are really committed into reading, you guys can finish this in just less than two days. But then. The other day, I was too busy, so I actually divided it into two. And I managed to finish the first part in one night and another one in another night. So basically, it's like, it's only less than two nights, actually. But yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, and the words that Yasmin Mojahid used in this book is really straightforward. All the example given is kind of straightforward. So, like, it's really easy for... It, I, I don't think, like, there's a specific age for those who can read this book but I do think like it's suitable for those in prime uh, in high school but yeah everyone can read this book there's no limitation okay then I think I will start first with the my favorite chapter in this book which is okay okay we have a visitor okay <laughs> so I I did mention just now that Yasmin Yasmin Mojahid have a really simple way of explaining things in this book mm. and then and, and all the example given is really straightforward. So in one of the chapter, we have a visitor. Yasmin Mojahid actually, uh, she used, okay, let me just tell you the story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Basically what Yasmin Mojahid is trying to say is like, at all time, um, there are various thoughts in our mind. And Yasmin Mojahid, ask us to think of this thought as someone knocking at the door of our house. Okay, so imagine that if that someone is our neighbor, she came with a flowers and a food. Are we going to open the door? Like obviously we're going to open the door. Right? Yeah, Sophia, we're going yes. to open the door. Okay. <laughs> but how if the person that is knocking in our door have a gun in his hand? Are we going to open the door? I hope you guys say no. Okay, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> I won't open the door. Okay. Yes. So, negative thoughts are like the man standing in the door holding a bunch of, we- 
uh, a bunch of gun and he is only there to harm us he is there to harm our house so why will we let him in right so basically we will close the door yet but what happened in real life we are the one who keep on giving the pre access to this man though so this man is actually our negative thought right okay okay um okay we allow them into our mind like we feed them we give them space in our mind they are renting free in our head yeah and what happen if we keep on doing this is that it grow the negative thought keep on growing it keep on growing and it sabotage ourselves so what yasmin more jahid is trying to say here is if someone come to you with a sign that i want to harm you so what you have to do is don't let them in you have to close your door okay so this is what i mean by the author have a really straightforward uh way in giving the example uh, and it's all related to the topic that she wrote in the book okay so i can simplify in this chapter that yasmin mujahid want us to realize that we have control over our thought it is true that we cannot control who who knock on our door like anyone can knock on our door which is our mind mm. which is our negative thought and all but we have control who we want to let them in right so basically that is what yasmin mujahid is trying to say in the chapter of we have a visitor okay and then uh, yasmin simplify this book this chapter by giving uh, she came up with a formula on what to do if we are afraid of something so the first thing yasmin mujahid told us to do is we, when we are afraid of something we make doa we doa and we doa we ask for, for, for protection from the god and then the secondly we ask ourselves is there an action that i can take or i need to take in order to protect myself or the others so if your answer is yes and the action is halal so you you need to take that you need to do it and then after you do it uh you let it go then the next time if it knocks again on your door mm. you repeat the first and the second step again so let it go just repeat the first and second step okay and then that's all for chapter my most favorite chapter in the book uh, we, we okay. have okay okay and then i think i'll go to chapter 1 which is the promise of allah okay, okay. so allah does not burden any i love this man. chapter too oh okay <laughs> i know right okay so allah does not burden any human beyond what they can bear okay so as we grow old all right sophia like we went to school we went to college we went to university uh, oh. we met a lot of people we met a lot of people and then everyone is telling us a different story so th- everyone is telling us their struggle in life so what we can conclude here is everyone is having their own struggle in life and we realize that actually life can be extremely difficult it's not easy at all yeah extremely But, difficult yes extremely be <laughs> okay yeah but then at the same time you need to remember that allah have promised us that allah told us that he will never give us something more than what we can handle right yeah. so so god has promised us that all those difficulties and struggle it are not meant to destroy us it was given by god to strengthen us it was never meant to destroy us so before we talk about how to find happiness after despair maybe we need to change our perspective on how we look at difficulties and the struggle that ha- that god has yeah. given us okay so we move to the next chapter which is stop focusing on ourselves okay this is actually related to the chapter 1 mm. uh, based on my observation lah because okay uh okay one of yasmin mujahid mentioned in the book that one of the most toxic thing we can do is to assume that all the tests that allah given us is because he doesn't love us uh, okay so sophia like basically if if you are in trouble and suddenly like something like everything went wrong we will basically we will go like oh what if i really deserve this what if yeah. memang yeah, yeah. God, really, god is trying to show me a sign or blah 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 so yes. what we are doing here is we are punishing ourselves of the past mistake that we did but we do not realize that 
that is actually one of the best tool that the shaitan use. That is mm-hmm. that is the most favorite thing that shaitan use to control the human. Uh, he will keep on reminding us of all our past mistake. He will he will constantly remind us of all the mess up that we did in the past. So, uh, when the person and why why did shaitan love to do this? This is because if a person if someone focus too much on what they did in the past, their mistake uh, and their weakness. What happen next? They start to lose hope. They fall into despair, and this is this is the main thing that shay- the shaitan want, right? So, so, so despair. Yeah, because a person who has fallen into despair, they have no motivation to get up to uh, a closer to the God. Yeah. So we have to remember that Yasmin Mo Jahid mentioned in her book <laughs> that we have to remember we are human. It is true that. Papa, we did we did a lot of mistake in the past, but it is because we are human. Uh, so like we we can't run away from making mistake. Yeah. Uh, we will mess up. We will, we will fall. But what do we have to do? Uh, what we what we have to do is, when we mess up, we remorse, we repent sincerely, and we move on. Do not get stuck into the mistake that we've been doing in the past. Yeah. And don't keep on thinking about it. Yeah. Just move on. Okay, and then in the next chapter that I would like to talk about is okay. chapter. I think it's chapter three. Good hope. So, yeah. Okay, Yasmin Mo Jahid mentioned that if you wanted to repent, it requires hope because uh, we we need we need to hope that. The God will forgive us for what we did in the past. That is going to motivate us into getting closer, closer to to Allah, and that is what that is not what Shaitan went. And then, <laughs> so, so uh, Yasmin Mojahid uh, summarized like there's four ways, uh, to to move on from our past mistake, um, which is. Also known as Taubat Nasuha, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so firstly, we feel a sense of remorse in our heart, which is a feeling of regret of what we committed in the past. Yeah. And then secondly, stop committing the sin. And then, I know it's so easy, but this is why Yasmin more just yes. more just hate us. So I'm just <laughs> delivering delivering the message. Okay, and then the third okay. one is make a sincere intention to not return to the action. Okay, and then lastly, if it involves other person, you have to deal with that person. You have to ask for forgiveness from that person. But if that person that don't want to forgive you or whatever, that that is on their part. Okay, so yeah. what you have to do is this four step. So with this four step, you move on, and then you will make you uh, we hope that God will forgive you. That is enough. You don't have to get stuck in your past mistake and keep on rem- remembering what you did in the past. Okay, that's all for chapter four. Uh, it's chapter four, I think. Okay, and then <laughs> okay, and then chapter five. Chapter five is happiness. Okay. Okay, okay Sophia, how do you define happiness? For me, happiness is when I'm at peace. Oh, yo. Okay. <laughs> Why? Okay, happiness so general. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, okay. So for for what Yasmin Mojahid mentioned in the book. Okay. Happiness is something internal. It is mm. something inside us. It it is a combination of two. First is uh, the way we think, and then the second the second one is the way we act. So how we can uh, so what can we do in order to increase our happiness? Okay, so this is actually uh, this is a new information to me as well. Okay. I found out that uh, Yasmin Mojahid wrote in the book that psychologists found that we have we have like few different attributional style uh, which is how we interpret what happened in the world okay so basically there's two there's two attributional style which is negative and positive and yeah. the negative one is called internal stable and global is three different point internal stable and global okay so uh, someone with someone who have the internal negative thinking 
whenever something bad happen, they tend to take it like really, really deep into their heart. So they they tend to blame everything that happen, uh, because of themselves. Mm. Uh, you usually they will say like this happened because I'm not good enough. This happened because mm. I'm a bad person. So they basically they blame everything. And then the second one is stable. Okay, people with stable negative way of thinking, uh, when something bad happen, they think that the thing that happen is not is never going to change. It's never going to uh to improve. It is always it is going to stay that way, forever. So, uh, so, uh, Yasmin, they, she gave us an example from Ayub, 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 Ayub Alaihissalam. Okay, Ayub Alaihissalam. Okay, okay. Who? Sorry, sorry. Who went through <laughs> trials after trial? Mm. Uh, and but then, after years of trial, it was shocking that he never gave up. He make he still make a du'a saying, "Indeed, indeed, difficulty has befallen me, and you are the most merciful of the merciful." Okay, if we if we um observe this du'a, there's two part of the du'a. The first part is indeed difficulty has befallen me. Um. In the in the first part of the du'a, he, Ayub Ayub Alaihi Wasallam, was trying. He was he was showing to God that he he is in trouble. He is in the burden that God has given him something that burdened him. Mm. He didn't pretend that he didn't pretend that everything is fine. He told yeah. God that I am in trouble. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He told he told us that he was going through a hard time, right? Okay. I uh, and. It was it was so contradict with you, with us when usually when we are having a difficult time we tend to pretend that we did not have it we we didn't we we won't admit it we keep on saying oh it's okay I'm okay I'm okay I'm used to it it's okay I'm okay yeah. we never want to own it but Ayub 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 Alaihi Salam Alaihi Salam Alaihi Salam he never he never he didn't pretend that he didn't know that he did yeah. he didn't pretend that he he's not he is not feeling that yeah so. Ayub is an ideal example of a believer that remained faithful uh, to Allah no matter what happened in his life. And then the second part of the du'a, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. Okay, he was truthful with the God. He did not lose hope uh, no matter what 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 the <laughs> no matter what happened in his life. He is still focusing <laughs> on the God mercy. So yeah. in the end, what happened is Allah completely turned his situation around and gave him everything that he lost, and even replace it with something better. So you can see in this situation, the thing that Ayub Alaihi Wasallam is facing is not, uh, is not stable. I mean, it's not it's something that is constant. So mm. what we can learn, Yasmin Mujahid is trying to say that. In this dunya, there is nothing, nothing, nothing is constant. Everything is temporary. Yeah. So, including our happiness and our sadness. So, it is really contradict with someone who have a uh, stable, negative thinking who keep on thinking that all the difficulties is forever and never gonna go away from their life. Okay, and the third one, the third point is global. So, someone who have a global negative attributional style is uh, someone who when something happen he she he or she they tend to relate everything in their life uh, for example like oh uh, I, my grade is bad my life is bad I don't I don't I don't deserve to live anymore and whatever so <laughs> uh, yeah wait Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, so Yasmin in in this book, Yasmin Mojahid did tell us that when we face difficulty, is it is not, it is not, uh, it is only one aspect in our life. It is not everything. There are countless other aspect in our life that are going well. For example, if we have, we might have a financial trouble, but we are healthy. We yeah. might be healthy, but we have mm. a family family issue. So mm. like. 
so it's not it's not everything is not uh i mean yeah you got what i mean right <laughs> yeah. okay it's only one aspect in your life <laughs> huh? one aspect oh, yeah. in your life <laughs> okay oh, yeah. so there's one principle in the quran that stated that indeed with difficulty is is okay i i like this part the most in the book is because okay it is from surah ar it is from surah ashar okay in this surah it mentioned that indeed with difficulty is is with difficulty is is so we god is trying to say with one difficulty allah actually give us many is at the same time not after he didn't mention in the yeah, yeah. after difficulty is there is an is he in oh. the in surah al ash he mentioned that with difficulty is is so how uh so yeah so that's why that like, there's no way that you uh, whenever something bad happen there is usually something good in your life too you can blame everything you can have this global type of thinking Okay so mm. how can we relate this with depression and anxiety Okay this is actually kind of sensitive issue and I don't I don't really want to touch it deeper and but I, I will just I will just delivering what Yasmin what I I <laughs> Yasmin Mojai is trying to say Okay <laughs> Okay so Yasmin told us that psychologists found that people who have these three negative thinking which is internal uh global and stable they are most likely to fall into depression and anxiety because this is because yeah basically they they are really negative in their life so but i'm not i i'm not i'm not really sure if i can say that is kind of sensitive issue so yeah. i just leave it there so uh yasmin mojahid summarized that chapter with we can we can uh i mean we can change our life by changing the way that we think so whatever happen just take it as a good thing don't don't despair yeah mm, yeah and then i think this is the second last part okay first okay i think this is the second last part okay. which chapter madam a problem solver i'm not sure which chapter is, is it okay 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 yes yasmin mojahid she mentioned that a person who is always finding problem in every moment is constantly going to be anxious stress weighed down and preoccupied okay when we when we try to find every solution to our problem it is actually we we are it is actually we it will make us tired because we will never find the solution we ha- we forgot the phrase that Allah use which is la haula wala quwata illa billah there is no power or strength except by Allah so it means that we are not going to solve every problem in our life alone Allah will help yeah. us we have to have faith that Allah will help us so we have to stop depending on ourselves to solve every problem in our life including the problem of our friends family and others okay okay uh we are we as a human is very is very is very common to us to be a control freak yeah i mean like i admit that i also like i am constantly i am constantly worry but like i i just wanted to control my whole life you know like i don't want to mess up my life so yes <laughs> so when we when we tend to control our life we tend to be anxious we are stressed we we will be in a very difficult time because we depend too much on ourselves instead of our yes. so it can be linked with anxiety because we mm. are carrying something that is not meant for us to carry wow okay yeah so so what yasmin is trying to say here is stop solving everyone's problem it is okay it is it, it's not like you don't have to be there for someone that need you yeah it's that's different, different. yeah uh. it's different thing it is okay to be there for someone that need you and listen but don't try to solve Okay I can actually relate this to one of my favorite book from the other author which is uh Richard Templer the book is The Rules of People Okay oh I my really God, like I was this just book. about to ask 
I was just about huh? to ask you towards the end of the session. Oh, okay, okay. The the okay. books that you would like to recommend okay. if someone okay. interested to. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, go on. Yes, Richard Templer. Uh, <laughs> okay, Richard Templer in the book uh, The Rules of People, he mentioned uh, the rules of people is that listen, don't solve. Repress your urge to do something. You are already doing something. You are listening. So basically, you don't have to solve everyone's problem. Being there for them and listening to their problem actually is them. Like, yeah, you don't don't try to think that every time people come to you and talk to you, they are trying to find a solution. Usually, they only want to burn it out. Yeah. yeah. So, La Hawla Wala Kuwata Illa Billa is a really powerful as it opened doors to many, many places that we never imagined. So, put your trust in Allah. <laughs> Okay, and then I think I will go to the last chapter, which is Remembrance of Allah. Okay, okay, this this chapter, I think this actually, this chapter is like something that really slapped me in the face when I read it. <laughs> it's really ouch, <laughs> la, like, it's simple way, it's like really ouch. La. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys want to know, you guys should buy this book la, because I'm going to elevate <laughs> just a little. Okay, okay. Okay, so Yasmin Mojahid, Mojahid mentioned that in real life, oxygen is mm. our physical need. Mm. Okay. And I know that a lot of people is not going to agree with this. I mean, like, a lot of people is not going to com be comfortable uh, hearing what I'm going to say, but sp spiritually, our oxygen is the remembrance of Allah. It is our solat. So, mm. if someone doesn't pray, it is equal to like, they're not breathing. Yeah. Okay. When we start to see solat as oxygen, we do not compromise it. We start to realize that the timing of the solat is like uh, the prescription given by the doctor. Okay. If, for example, if a doctor tell us, where is your, uh, this is, here is your medicine. Uh, you have to take it five times a day on a specific time. If you didn't take it on a specific time, you will die. Okay, the okay. doctor tell you that. Okay, so what will, what will we do? We Obviously, we are going to be so committed into eating it like in a specific time, okay? So, so we, are not, we, are not, we are not going to say, oh, I'm busy today, I'm not going to eat it. Yeah. Obviously, you are going, so you are putting your life at risk, right? So, you're going to yes. die. so obviously, you won't miss that five, five dose of the medicine in uh, your everyday life. Okay, so it's like a person saying, I'm really down, I'm feeling sick, so I will just stop breathing. When I feel better, I will start breathing again. So does mm. it make sound to you, Sophia? Like obviously it doesn't make sound at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds silly, but that is what we do. That is what mm. we do in our daily life. That's why I think that this chapter is like really slap, slap us in the face, lah. Like really ouch, lah, to me. So like, okay, we look at our solat as something we can short of live without. Yeah. So that is like the wrong thing, lah, to do. So it is. If can, regardless of what is happening in our life, yeah. we have to perform it uh, on time, on a specific time. Okay. So, when we busy, we still breathe. When we shopping, we still breathe. When we are studying, we still breathe. So, oh, even, wow. when That's studying, <laughs> even when we are studying, even when we feel like dying, we are still breathing actually. So, we need to keep on breathing by praying, no matter what yeah. happens. That is what, that is... I think that is what indirectly Yasmin Mojahid is trying to say in the book. It is, it is okay. I, and then, as, as I mentioned before in the beginning of the video, that Yasmin Mojahid gave us as a really, really direct example for each of the chapter. And this example is the other example that slapped me in the face. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Well, Yasmin Mojahid, so, uh, okay, she shares something from someone. Okay, there is a sister who worked in a preschool. And she told them that she cannot perform her solat when she is working because she is working with the children. She cannot leave mm. the children. Mm. So they asked her, so how did you go to the toilet? And then she, 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 she answered with, I will take another teacher to cover for me. So there you go. <laughs> yes. yeah. So you already know the answer, right? Like, okay, that, if, there, if there is a will, there is a way. So there's no that you are actually giving excuses on why you are not performing your solat. But how why you can go to toilet on time? Like 
even when you are sitting for the most important examination in your life if you feel yeah. like you're going to pee you are going to the you're going to raise your hand and go to the toilet you are not going yes. to sit there and tahan until yeah so that is what Yasmin Mo Jahid told us in the last chapter it, it is it is the second last chapter of the book i think i have done my yeah i think i've done i've done my book review okay. you have any question <laughs> I think I go I went too fast right oh my god sorry no <laughs> i was enjoying the moment oh my god i love it i really really love it um uh, <laughs> i have questions obviously oh, uh, i have questions to you why uh, why didn't you text me first this question before the live <laughs> <laughs> this is a spontaneous question after you share okay, your book with me okay okay shall 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 we start with my question first or with our audience question first? Oh, Which one? The audience have a question. I think the audience question. They have. Question. They have. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, I will start with the audience question first. Okay. Okay. Sure. All right. This is the first question. How would you advise a person who is suffering from anxiety but doesn't want to hear anything about religion? Okay. okay. I I already told you guys that anxiety and all this thing is like it's kind of sensitive issue and I yeah. I'm not in a position where I can elaborate more. Mm-hmm. But I, I actually there Yasmin Mojai wrote something about that in the book. Okay, basically if a person is suffering from anxiety, check you have to check like you you cannot you cannot come to her and advise her on all the religious thing. if the pro- the root of the problem is his or her solat mm. so basically because the solat is like the oxygen like yasmi moja moja had mentioned in the book that solat is the oxygen of of a person so you it's it is it is worthless if you go and talk to people about how to overcome anxiety because of, of a re, re, uh, by doing this religious thing and all if the root of the problem is that person they didn't even perform the solat and they i mean like yeah they don't they don't really get close to allah so there's there's no i i think it's kind of hard for you to go further if the root of the problem is that yeah mm. okay okay so my question okay oh and uh when we're talking about being positive and there are negative people so uh i think it is something that are easy for us because we are among our cliques that are thinking the same thing you know like okay taking things positively uh when someone having a bad day we leave them up you know something like that but um do you i i want to ask actually uh the people uh that how to put this in words uh the other people and how us as the person who appreciate positive thinking to approach them you know you 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 will encounter uh that kind of people in your life right oh you mean someone who is often negative and don't yes. really, it's not always positive or... yeah it's like like you mentioned the one uh the one who uh but in front of our door with the gun oh yeah right so oh, okay. we cannot let them in we cannot let them in but how if they eventually <laughs> come into oh, our mind kind of hard question <laughs> okay no i mean uh you must have experienced that right yes mean okay so your question is how how we are going to stop the negative thinking from coming to us is it how to deal with it how to deal with negative thought okay yeah i think everyone have a different coping mechanism yes and okay i can't really answer on behalf of everyone but in my opinion what i did whenever this thing encounter me is i keep myself busy mm. so i will i will obviously i will one thing i will do is i will turn off my notification i will turn off the wifi and the data and i will keep myself busy by uh, especially i will i will read a book like i sometimes mm. I, i set a goal like i have to finish the book by what day what day what day but sometimes that i just read it like spontaneously and relax 
in uh, and then yeah i think like i think everyone if you ask everyone everyone will be giving you the same answer could like keep yourself busy keep yourself busy keep yourself busy but how okay but my question is how my question to you so how, <laughs> how, how how if that person don't really have something to do in their life and they they don't really have a lot of commitment so basically they spend their life every day like in their room and then they you know and you know, then that's what i've been talk. thinking uh, this few days you know like uh, i'm saying reading is my coping mechanism so i'm asking back myself is this my coping mechanism or my escapism you oh, know man. Yeah. yes yeah so uh because we kind of escape ourselves from one thing to another let's say i want to escape uh i want to escape from this this people so i shift myself to another thing you know that that make me uh don't remember or don't think about that person so that's actually something that i've been thinking about what do you think about it <laughs> Yeah, I basically I don't really have a specific answer for this lah but basically what I did was I was trying to live a healthy life so I basically I went I went yes. for a job every day uh, almost every day uh I I do love morning job so Ooh. like I I have I I love nature so I think like me nature give me, give me it charge me so Yes. I think yeah I I don't really know how to answer this question though because I basically yeah I just read and then I do physical activity basically I just distract myself from thinking about it okay but one thing if the thing mm. really like it really cannot get out from my mind I just I just let myself cry yes I just I just have a I want to hear that day, <laughs> yeah I just have a one day I oh this is the thing that some uh, I actually I advise to all my friends mm. if if you are having a really hectic week and you can you you really you can seem to find like a positive thinking in that week you need to have at least one day break one day break you have to have that one off day you've been yes. busy you can keep yourself busy from monday until saturday but at least have one day to totally For distract yourself. yourself from everything so what what i did on this one day of the week is i will do my reading because I I do love reading but sometimes because of the commitment that I have I have I I can't really commit to reading. So actually it saddened me. The thing that saddened me when we have a lot of work is that I cannot read I cannot focus on my reading. So this yes. one day that I have I will focus fully on reading. So I I And we're looking huh? we're looking forward on that day, right? Yeah, basically <laughs> but yeah, sometimes yeah, sometimes I can get that day sometimes no. Sometimes I have to work like I I have to work 7 days a week. So yeah. have a break for yourself like at least once once a week is good for your health your mental health yeah anything that makes you feel alive and benefited you inshallah you can continue doing it right as long yeah. as it halal <laughs> yeah, like, no, you said. Halal. <laughs> like you said so yes go on okay let me tell you they have more questions oh, okay Oh man, oh man. How would you advise someone who views people who are suffering from this pressure depression as people who have strayed from religion? Okay. Mm. I Oh, why is why I got to ask you this question? Okay. Okay. I we we cannot deny that actually a lot of people they have that mentality. I have a friend that think that way too and mm. basically that people is around us they they keep on thinking that there are some people out there they keep on thinking that someone who is depressed who who have anxiety is basically because they are not close to Allah and all I I have a stand that I I do really agree with that I do agree that because I do read a lot that even the most religious people also can get depression and all so I don't know but from what I read, I, I I'm not sure but from what I read from Yasmin Mujahid punya buku it actually mentioned that it is true that whatever that people is saying is true that if someone is in depression or anxiety it is because of they are not close to God. Yeah, I think that is one thing that I do, I do not really agree with Yasmin Mujah Mujahid Mujahid okay. in his book. Yeah. But then taking into consideration that she graduated with psychologists and she's a 
specialist in me then I do think like she has a point lah. Yeah. Mm. But do you think it linked to one another? Religion and our emotion and our being. I can say it linked but it not indirectly. I think it I think it's indirectly it's not it's not really something that link directly could. Okay. Oh sorry. All right. Okay. <laughs> Why? No. Don't be sorry. Okay, okay. Okay, we will do selang seli, okay? So my question next. Uh as a you're not Can teenagers. You're giving me a very tough question. This is not a tough I love this conversation. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> okay, so you you are not teenagers, but um, young adults, not quite then. So young adults. Um, what do you think of uh, your circle of friends or your generation? I mean, your generation too, actually. <laughs> Uh, what? Are we not in the same generation? We are in the same generation. <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> so, what do you think they they lack like, of uh, in terms of something that related to our emotions and related to um to this kind of topic? You know, lost, finding happiness after despair. What What do you think that we are lack like of? You know. Can I just say we are lack of faith in God? Because um, as what I mentioned just now, we are a control freak. We wanted to control everything in our life, including me. Yeah. I, I cannot deny that I wanted to control everything in my life. I don't want it to mess up. So I think like, but I don't really blame them because I do think that in this generation, we we are forced to be like that. Yeah. We are forced to, we we are so anxious that we have to control our We have we have the urge to control our our own life. Like we won't even give a chance for any mistake. So mm. that is really, that is what makes us depressed, and mm. we have anxiety and all. Mm. And yeah, I do think. But yeah, the root of the problem is the we forgot the phrase the the phrase by Allah that la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That yeah, there is no strength from uh, other than God. Mm. Yeah, that that is one thing that I think we are lack of. That we don't really realize that we have to rely on God fully. After, after, yeah, of, of course, after like after we did our part, then we have to rely. Like, tawakal, I think it's tawakal. Yeah. Yeah. Tawakal. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, that's very beautiful. Mashallah. Okay. It's a it's a slap on my face. Don't ask me any tough question anymore. Oh my god. I won't believe me. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, you next. Then you won't, but then the question keeps on coming hard. Oh I don't know, but I love I love this honest conversation with people where where I rarely had because of this time we live in in can uh, in this pandemic. So I really appreciate. Uh, the conversation I really, re- I I actually really appreciate uh, a face-to-face conversation rather than uh-huh. uh, writing. Uh-huh. So so I really want to make the best of this opportunity. <laughs> okay, so next question uh, from Shahida: How oh, to Shahida. differentiate between a tri- between a trial or a punishment? Oh my gosh, Shahida, why you do this to me? Okay, Shahida, <laughs> actually, for your information, I have. Even this question, I have asked someone this question too previously, mm. and even yeah. they don't. They, I mean, they also don't have the answer for me. So from what I can say, um, what what I can summarize from what I got from the people that I asked, how to differentiate between the, uh, the question is punishment and what, trial. Oh, okay, a trial and punishment. It is not on our part. That is mm. on. That is our part. Allah have. I mean, like, we we. We don't have to think that, oh, okay, this this the thing the struggle we having is oh this is trial oh this is punishment oh this is trial we cannot have that thinking. Yeah, jangan lah, sorry lah, thinking. So, so back to what Yasmin Mojahid is trying to deliver to us is like 
we have to have faith in Allah and don't get stuck in the thing that we did. All we have to do is have hope. Have hope that Allah will forgive us for all the things that we did in the past and move on. Move forward. Yeah. Don't We don't have to we don't have to stuck in that situation and think, oh, I think this is a punishment. Oh, I think this is only trial. We are yeah. not in that position to decide yes. that that is all our Kim. Kim. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's all Kim. Oh my God. Yes. I I agree. <laughs> See you. And we're not Thank going you. any... We're not going anywhere if we if we keep on thinking on the same thing. Right? Yeah. That's why I, I love to move on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm giving chance to the audience. <laughs> oh, just Aisha. now you wanted me to share. Oh, Aisha, sorry. Oh. Aisha, you your favorite part of the book, please. Oh, I mentioned just now my favorite part of the book is chapter. I think chapter six. Good. Oh yeah, chapter six. We have a visitor. Uh, because I I really like this part because Yasmin basically Yasmin Mojahid punya example that she she gave like we can really relate it to our life lah like. If someone is knocking on our door and if yeah. the person is giving us flower, we are going to open that door. That is yeah. positive thought. And then if someone is knocking on our door and then he is actually holding a gun, obviously we won't let them in. So that mm. is the negative thought. But what we do is we keep on keep yeah. on giving them the free access to rent free in our head. So, uh, yeah. That's and the then, power that we can do, right? Uh, huh? That's the power that we can do for ourselves. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then like I like I like the I like the point lah. I like uh, I like the point that Yasmin Mojahid actually told us that if someone come with you with a sign, I want to harm you. I like I want to harm you. So like don't let them in. Close the door. Shut them out. Yes. Don't let them in. Yeah. Yes, and it's actually a learning process for us, right? To yeah. recognize which one holding the gun, which one holding the flower. Which yeah. one we want to let them in and which one we don't. So it's a learning process and it's a journey. Yeah, life's a journey. So don't be afraid if you tumble once in a while. But yeah, get up strong, inshallah. Yeah. We can do this. True. Inshallah. <laughs> yes. Okay, my question next. Mm, I want to hear your recommendations on the same topic or the same genre as I Lost My Way. Again, again? Uh, I want to hear your recommendations of book that have the same genre and topic as I Lost My Way. Ah, oh, okay. Do you read? So we can we can call okay. this self-help okay, book. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, yeah, it is self-help, self-help book. Okay, basically I don't read non-fictional book. I only read fictional book. Is it oh. right? Which is fictional? I get confused most of the time. Fictional, Fic- fictional is fictional is Self, this. Self-help this is, is fictional. Oh, sorry. I read only non-fictional book. Non-fictional book is self-help book, right? Yeah. Wait, we are the same, though. Wait, wait. I, I, I'm confused most of the time. Wait, I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read only self... I mean... Okay. I read, factual. I factual. Read, yes, 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 yes. I, I factual is non-fiction. Non-fiction. Okay, yeah. so fiction is... Not the story. Book and, yes, oh yeah, yes. story. Okay. Uh, uh. So basically, I have I have this habit. I don't know why. I really cannot read any non-fictional book. Like, okay. So, but but, but I'm slowly. It's not, it's not like, it's not like <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. But I do remember that I have a book, a, a story book. I think it took me like six years and it still haven't finished. <laughs> <laughs> I really cannot. Like, I I keep on opening it. Okay. I no 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 no. I just I just I just let it pass. Then in the end, I don't I don't know where I don't know where I put the book anymore. So yeah, I always have this thing for self help. For whenever I go into any bookstore, the first section I will go is obviously self help. Yes. And one of the favorite book that I really love is I. I Okay, I started reading. I started to love reading because of this book, uh, "A Chicken Soup for the Soul." I'm not sure if people know about this. Someone yeah. who doesn't know will think that it, it is a recipe book. It is not. <laughs> okay, it, basically, it is, it is a a compilation of book that a lot of a lot of short story inside. There's a lot yeah. of short story that it gives us. Um, yes. It gives us a message in the end of the need, but it's a really short story. So and then the next book I will recommend you, I think that have the same genre as I Lost My Way is 
Richard, I don't know why, but I keep on talking about Richard Templer punya book, apa, uh, <laughs> The Rules of People. Basically, The Rules of People, it teaches us how we adopt, how we adapt ourselves to our surrounding because everyone have different personality, everyone have different, apa, different mindset and all, but how hmm. do we win people? How do yeah. we adapt to the situation? So, yeah, there's a lot of thing that uh, Richard Templer mentioned in the book. Uh. Mm. Yes, okay. So, Richard Templer and chicken soup. Yeah, chicken soup for the soul. Yes. Soul. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, that's great, great. Uh, yes, I love, I love to read uh, fic- uh, non-fiction too. Uh, but I'm slowly, uh, I don't know, I hope and I pray you will find the fiction book that you love that will open the doors to more fiction book, you know? Ayo, do you have one? <laughs> yes, I have. Okay. Uh, wait. Have you read this? I mean, I've been trying for years though that I still cannot read all this drama. And this? And no, this is not okay. drama. But this is okay. uh, fiction. Try, try. Okay. Try. I will. <laughs> Text me the try. title. Okay, later. All right. Sure. So, uh, you know, yeah, I, 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 I am an uh, avid fan of uh, nonfiction as well. I grew up with uh, lots of uh, nonfiction, but. Uh, there are times that you want to shift your genre, right? Right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I I read this, I get to again. So, so these fiction books, they they are giving you values that you read in um, uh, in nonfiction, but through stories, through beautiful stories and underlying meanings, you know. So, so you got to think that that's what I love about the fiction. <laughs> okay. I hope I will. I think, I mean, like, I hope one day God will open my heart to read a fictional book. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day, inshallah. One day. I believe. I believe you will. Mm. Oh my God. Okay, so it's 9 11. Wow. Yeah, it's almost an hour. Hour. I love okay. this conversation. I really appreciate your time, uh, Yasmin. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Uh, you have just completed your uh, exam, right? Yeah, finals, semester three. Yeah. Yes. So we pray for you to pass your exam with flying oh, thank colors. You. Inshallah. <laughs> thank you. Inshallah. Okay, before thank we close the session, Yasmin, do you have any last words for us? Uh, yeah, obviously I have a last word. I would like to thank Shahida. I mean, you can see in the, <laughs> in the comment section. She is the one who introduced me to Sophia. Yeah. And she asked me, thank you for it being the bitch. during week 14 now. I think it was during week 14, the hectic week. Shahida actually <laughs> DM me and asked me, Yasmin, I think, uh, would you like to do a book review? I was like, oh, let me think first, okay? <laughs> and then eventually I agree. Uh, agree but then I did, I did like reply a, a bit late because it was my final week. And then eventually I finished my final and I get... I get in touch with Sophia and I was really grateful to be given this opportunity. <sighs> yeah. Sophia is really great. Yeah, I think if anyone would like to do a book review, you can just find <laughs> Sophia. Yeah, Sophia will gladly, gladly yeah, help me <laughs> <to do> it. <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. Okay, so okay. I think that's about it. Yeah. I want more, obviously, but inshallah soon. I will persuade Yasmin to do more soon. So in Interstate <laughs> Publishing, we have more non-fiction books <laughs> to, feed, to feed her. Okay. Uh, so inshallah, that's about it, everyone. Thank you so much for sparing your time with us uh, this beautiful evening. I hope you guys stay safe and take care of your physical health as well as your mental health. Don't forget to check on one another, inshallah. And thank you again. Assalamualaikum yeah. warahmatullahi thank you, wabarakatuh. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.